And welcome in, everybody. Gone Racing, another lovely edition. I am back this week and feeling much better than I was feeling at the end of last week. And, of course, the lovely Jeff Motley. Not as lovely as what filled in for me last week, though. Uh, well, no. Uh, Alex White filled in for you last week. We really appreciate having Alex and, and, Vin. Vin, and Vinny. Yep. And Vinny filled in I as called well. Vinny. Just so you know, I called Vinny to say, hey, I, you know, I need my guy. But there was another little thing going on. That yeah, was the, the first, first day week. of March yes. Madness, and we're asking a sports book guy to sit in. And he'd already done the, the previous yeah. show, right? So uh, it was great, though. Everything worked out well. We, we uh, educated Alex in the world of of NASCAR and and we were also were able to talk about North Carolina starting right. sports betting and Vinny was very uh, well versed in that so oh yeah Vinny's uh, definitely well versed in that yeah, one it, it, and it, Alex I heard Alex found some great value last week too which was nice you know she she looks at it like a better which I know a lot of our fans aren't traditionally sports betters which is why we you know sometimes have to slow it down on the betting side, but she was great get, showing some value to people. Yeah, and she actually said she was going to go make a couple of bets after the wonder, show. Wonder so we did. need to find out if she actually cashed a ticket or not because I'm not. I can't. I don't know who she bet hey, on. Hey, speaking of cashing tickets, who cashed the um, ticket? You know, we have a four segment show here. Yes, and we discuss success oh, well, and failure in the fourth segment. Who's not the host in the today? First three who's segments. the host today? Who is hosting today? <laughs> Me or you? Yes, sir, Mr. Gone. That's right. Don't you forget it. I'm going to talk about how much I kicked your butts again. And and Anne reminded me as I walked in, I've said it 15 times, the cream has once again risen back to the top of our standings. How many races have we run? We're like... <laughs> Okay. Oh, I love this show. We are still professionally unprofessional. And we did a couple of those last week, too, by the way. We had some professionally unprofessional moments See, last that's, week. That, that's what makes us special, though. That's what, that's what, we, what we love here. That's, what, that's why people love us. Although, apparently, they love Alex better because one of our most viewed shows was with Alex. It was, yeah. We um, need to bring her back, apparently. I know. One, one of us needs to leave more often. We need to start calling Alex in. I guess so. Um, but last week, we did have a... a I got to say, Jeff, I mean, let's not talk about the gambling side for a second. Just a, a eh race at, at Coda for me. Um, uh, you know, just stage yellow cautions, just stage cautions. Not look, I love the track. It was a great racy race. It just did not give us a lot of the drama that we we've listened. I think we're getting spoiled. This new car has brought so much drama. We but have I, good I think, race. Just, and, just and not, look, I think one of the things that probably prompted the the lack of cautions was NASCAR moving the restart zone. That was big. Because you no longer had all 30 cars piling into turn one at one time, and I think that certainly made a huge difference because I think that's where we saw a lot of the calamity in years past. Now, throw out the first year when the track was wet. That doesn't count. You know, yeah, that the, was the, completely the, the, different. The year in the monsoon doesn't count, but you know, it's, it's you know, still... And, and I think we also had the race that was pretty crazy where Bowman and Almondinger and Chastain were all battling there on awesome the last the lap. And, and who knows? I mean, if Christopher Bell actually catches William Byron, which he was really close was to, I mean, another couple laps, maybe he catches him. Maybe then we're talking about what an incredible finish it was between those guys. But, hey, kudos to William Byron, a guy who uh, I think has he won, I think it was his first road course win. Well, and, uh, and Certainly first one at listen, Austin. We talked about it off air. There's a guy named Max Pappas. A lot of, a lot of the fans don't know. I know we talk about betting here, but Max Pappas is his little driver coach. And Max is a former the Formula One racer, IndyCar racer, sports car racer, NASCAR racer. Max been everywhere. But Max is – Max – I love me some Maximiliano Papi. Uh, he's married to, to Emerson Fittipaldi's daughter, and he has a, two sons that one of them's racing, and Max is his driver coach, and especially road racing. And uh, i got to give Max a little credit. He's definitely trained Byron up and done pretty darn good with it. Well, you know who else is really happy is anybody who bet any bets on William Byron last yes. week. Yes, William Byron was a 12-1 to 1 to win the race, so a great return if you bet him to win. Even his top three was a plus 275. Can't knock that one. Uh, group A was plus 325. He was in a head-to-head -head versus Elliott at plus 110. Uh, Chevy was the plus 130, which is no longer the favorite. So, I mean, that you got you know some, some numbers there. Uh, championship odds, his, he, he opened at 700. Down to 600. You and I talked about this. Uh, there was no, the best time was at the start of the season because we think his numbers are just going to keep shriveling this as won't they go. This will be his last win of the season. No, I don't think it will either. Uh, and then the top tens, um, small numbers, but one of those paid off well for me. Uh, William Byron, once again, 12 to 1 and 275. Christopher Bell, top three, 275. Um, no shocker there. Christopher Bell was absolutely one of the favorites. I got him on my top three. That was one of the guys I picked. And then Ty Gibbs, plus 300. Ty, really, uh, Jeff, you bid him as your, as your, uh, breakout guy this year, and man, you—that is the 
early season pick of the year so far. But some great names in the top five. The Dinger still comes back with a great top five finish or top ten finish. Ross Chastain, who's so great there, still there. Our, my man Chris Boucher, still cashing tickets. And, and, and to Chris Boucher's credit, had to start dead last. And starting dead last at a road course is a big difference than starting yes. dead last at Daytona, Talladega, or even Las Vegas or Charlotte. Yes. And Kyle, Bu- Kyle Busch, a little... Uh, a little miffed with old Seabell after the race. Had a little, couple dust-ups and still came home with a top-10 finish. Yeah, they through. had a little run-in up in turn one, and I think that was probably one of those things where they probably could agree to disagree. I mean, if you go and look at it's, the replay, I, you know. There was racing. I mean, I mean it, Bell's not know. trying to wreck Kyle Busch. No, and, I think, and I think Kyle knows deep down inside. Christopher Bell's not trying. They used to be teammates. I agree. Kid, I, but, I, don't you know. he, I don't think he – he, Tried to wreck him. It just was a racing gig. Kyle came down. Chris went up a little. It looked like it was more of two guys met in the middle, so to speak. Um, but not a bad, you know, overall finish. Some other guys ran pretty well. You know, early in the day, we saw Todd Gillen again scoring some stage points. Now, stage points were a little weird in this race, but still, him and Michael McDowell. Michael McDowell, God dang, man. Yeah, when power steering goes out, that killed him. <clears throat> you know, one name we don't see on that list, he came across the finish line in the top 10 but he got disqualified after the race was justin haley he had an incredible run i mean justin haley is a guy that seems like every week that team's been getting better and better uh got disqualified uh, some found some stuff wrong on the car after afterwards but uh, a really strong run for justin haley on a road course and the guy that we all talked about a ton in the last couple seasons svg shane van giesbergen uh 20th place did not really have a a good day going on no, sure. and I and and, and uh, you know the, the interesting one was uh, I believe it was the second year that Stenhouse and Kobayashi had their had, run, have, yeah. have had a run in, and somehow <laughs> I'm thinking Kamui shows up once a year, and and he can't get out, and Stenhouse <laughs> he and Stenhouse keep finding each other on the racetrack. Yeah, no, so, that's pretty impressive. Um, but let, let's look at our current standings for the minute, Jeff, because you know once again playoff standings versus versus point standings. There's differences here, but William Byron is your point leader uh, with because he has the two wins, but he's not the point leader as far as points. That is Denny Hamlin. Uh, or actually, it's Martin Truex Jr. right now having a good season, but he's down in sixth with no wins. So the, the playoff standings, that cutoff line's way early to start looking at that cutoff line. Super, super early. Uh, it's early, but there's one name above it okay. who I think is has me completely shocked, and I'm happy for him, is John Hunter Nemechek. Yeah, I, and I was that was what I was going to is JHN is doing, is, you know, Pretty darn strong coming right out of the box. But they've got some guys who are below it. There's a lot and of guys. Joey Logano, it. to me, stands out. And I know we're saying, okay, it's early, it's early, it's early. But keep in mind, we only run 26 races in the regular season. We've run six now, right? We, we've run six. Joey Logano is 100 points so we're to 20, Brad Keselowski's 134. We're 20% of the way through. And we also know road courses are not necessarily his strong suit. And there's a lot of road courses in these next 20 races. Yeah, but I still I think I I don't see Joey Logano not winning. When I look outside the top ten, I see Austin Dillon down there in 29th. I see Noah Gregson with that penalty way down there in 34th uh, and had a bad run this week. Didn't help him. Um, you know, I see some guys, but you see, I mean, got Brad Keselowski and Chris Boucher right now, both RFK cars in the top ten. When we talk about those championship odds, you know, those are guys right now that have some pretty deep odds. That could be a great little hedge for you right there to jump on maybe one of their numbers early. Yeah, and a little surprise right now to see Bubba Wallace outside the top 16 because I feel like he's run fairly well, but he really he's had a couple of rough results. Now, road coursing, we know, we know road courses are not his his thing. And, and you know, I made the joke last week that I asked him one time his favorite turn at Sonoma, and he said it's the, the one, one I, leaving the track. I'm leaving the racetrack. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I can appreciate that a little bit, but certainly, you know, we're going to start coming up on some tracks where he's got to feel like he needs to run well. And, and, and Joey Logano is another one who, I mean, like we, you know, we're not too far away from going to Dover. If that's a place that Joey Logano doesn't run well at Dover, then I'm going to start yeah, getting worried, then, about, then Joey we start worried about Joey and, and Texas. We got Texas and Dover coming up. See, and to me that, you know, we all talked early in the season. I think it was a kind of a, all of us, a spot on lock of the rookie of the year. We, we jumped on, oh, you know, Josh Berry, Josh, yeah, but, Carson Hosefar still leading the way. I mean, six races in. Who would have thought Spire Motorsports and Carson Hosefar is the leader in the clubhouse for the Rookie of the Year so far? Absolutely. And, you know, we're starting to see some better runs out of Zane Smith as well. So I think this rookie situation is, is going to be wide way open. Tough, way tougher than we, we had given it credit and for. And right now, I don't know that I'm seeing a win by a rookie this year. You know, if a rookie gets a win, they pretty much are going to win Rookie of the Year because of the way the points, the points are done go. now. You know, the I only, don't know that I see a win coming. The only thing I say with Carson Hosfar leading it, that would be definitely a long shot. We because Carson is a long shot to win. 
The only thing is Rodney Childers is an X factor in that. Rodney Childers is Rodney Childers. And that four team with Josh Berry, Rodney Childers finds, you know, hits hits that button just right. I think that that's kind of the X factor for that four team. You know, we'll see how he fares with the road courses. Now, he actually was able to do the Goodyear test this past week at Sonoma. Oh, was he? So Josh Berry and Chastain and Truex are up there doing the Goodyear test at okay. Sonoma this week. So Hopefully we'll that see helps if that out. helps him when it comes to see the road courses. We know how good Martin and Ross are on the road courses. So well, Let's get to the next co- couple of races before we get to the good stuff on the show. And, and, of course, next four we have this weekend. We're going to be talking pretty soon about all things Richmond Raceway. And Richmond Motor Speedway, or Richmond Raceway, not Motor Speedway, uh, at the Toyota 400. Um, and you all know my feelings on Richmond. We'll leave that one alone, Mr. Motley. <laughs> then we head to Martinsville for the Cookout 400. Then the Echo Park, Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. Wow, Texas sure knows how to put a mouthful out there again. Wasn't that the Bushy McBush race at Texas? No, that was Kansas. Uh, that's right. Uh, but Texas Motor Speedway, then the Geico 500 Talladega, and then the Worth 400 at Dover. That's our upcoming schedule. So, so once again, diverse set of tracks, two short cracks, then the mile and a half, then a super speedway, then the concrete monster. It is. But, you know, the one thing we don't do in the schedule anymore, and I really, I kind of miss it a little bit because I just always just love the irony in it. Remember how they used to always do Martinsville, and the yeah. very next week they would go to Talladega? I did. So you would go the, from the way, basically track. the shortest, slowest track <laughs> to, to the, the biggest. biggest, fastest track. And I always thought that was just a great, you know, uh, just awesome to have those two back to back. Now there's a little bit of separation in there. You got Texas in between the two. Um, but you're right. The diversity of racetracks coming up. Um, but what I do, uh, do see is three somewhat short tracks. Your Toyota, you're trying to make hay right now because these Toyotas, a mile and below, the Toyotas look to be the car to beat. Uh, listen, the, the odds have flip-flopped for the manufacturer prop since the start of the season, right? Toyota was was sitting there second. Now they're the favorite in the clubhouse. So They won't be at Texas. They won't be at Texas, but they are the favorite this, well, maybe foreshadowing. Are they still the favorite at Richmond? We'll see. And we come back, we're going to give you who's been great at Richmond and start with our odds and some really cool news on Jeff and I. One of the favorite things I like is the head-to-heads. Really cool numbers on those when we come back. From the South Point studio. <laughs> The perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. It's comedy. It's the over-under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yes. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. For real. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> 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 I look at the clock. I go, ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines live at noon every weekday. Once you've satisfied your hunger, get ready for more of the hottest casino games in Vegas. Our 24-hour, 30-table, non-smoking poker room proudly hosts all the most popular poker games with a variety of betting limits. Visit the poker room for a schedule of daily tournaments. Whether you're going to hold them or fold them, the best place for poker is at South Point Casino. You'll notice that our craps tables are usually the loudest in the casino. If you've never played, join one of our free craps lessons to find out what makes this game so exciting. Check with the craps dealer for schedules and give it a roll. Bingo is also an exciting way to spend your time. We offer seven sessions of bingo every day. And each session includes a cash ball jackpot, 12 bingo games, a progressive double action game, and a $10,000 bonus coverall. Electronic units are available. If you haven't played bingo with us, give it a try today. Guests can also get in on the action at our one-of-a-kind race and sports books. Two separate rooms designed to maximize your experience and comfort. Our sports book, with over 400 seats, puts you right in the middle of the action, 24 hours a day. And welcome back in. Brennan Gone, Jeff Motley, and Gone Racing. And we are just getting into the good parts of the show, which is time to give the odds and all the fun stuff for Richmond. And Jeff, you want to talk about some guys that have been really good here? I think if we show this stat right here, it won't surprise me and you, but might surprise some fans at home. You really think so? Anything with Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin, uh, success is surprising yeah, anybody? Yeah, but, but, but the amount of success, that's the difference. The, the, Look, I raced for a long time, and I was great at Texas, Vegas. I was great. You know, I've got not some, at Richmond. 
Not at Richmond. No, no, not at Richmond. <laughs> not at Richmond. I got some great stats at a few places. Kyle Busch, 36 races at Richmond. 28 top 10s. Did you ever want to ask him for pointers? I did. You could give me all the pointers you wanted. I tried to summon See, Tim Richmond one year. I've I've done voodoo. Dog. We had Joe Boo in our pit one year trying to do something. I I, I you know Joe you Boo were can't. De- you were defeated when you pulled through the tunnel. Uh, no, and that's the I, I say that all the time about the guys at Talladega. That that was my that was me at Richmond. I I <laughs> we used to joke about it at Martinsville, but I liked it. But the real place was Richmond. And when Dennis Bickmeyer was there. I used to just crush him on that stuff. But Kyle Busch, 19 top fives, six wins, and 28 top tens in 36 races. You realize that's a 55% top five rate? That's that's phenomenal at any racetrack for any driver. That's, that's a, those are phenomenal that's numbers. That's ridiculous. But, but let me ask, and I want to ask you a question. As a person who used to drive at RCR, yes, are the cars as good as they need to be for Kyle right now? I don't know if they are or not. But this is a place that Kyle can make up a little bit for it. So, so whether they are or not, this is where Kyle Busch is going to be able to make up for it. And at the bottom of that graphic, though, Jeff, you got the guy that's been there 36 times. The guy that's only been there seven times, Christopher Bell, has four top five. No wins yet, but four top fives in seven races. I like the fact that you said yet because... If you're going to bet against Christopher Bell this week, I say do I so, so at your own peril. Do so at your own peril. There is no don't lines on Christopher Bell this week. Negatory. I, I, I just don't think that is a smart move by no, anyone. No, but some guys in the middle there, you know, that, that Brad Keselowski good. There's guys that have been good, but but still, to me, that Chris, the, the top and bottom, you know, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch at the top, C. Well, Bell at the bottom. And, and are, let's think about how good Toyota has been at this track as well. Keep in mind, yep, Kyle yep, Busch, last all six years. of those wins were in a Toyota. Denny Hamlin's four wins, Toyota. Truex, three wins there. I'm going to guess at least two of those are in the Toyota. Well, and who's, who's the best still? Still, you always do, what have you done for me lately? Even what have you done for me lately? Last 10 races, nine top 10s, seven top fives, three wins, Martin Truex Jr. Average finish, 4.2. Average finish, 4.2 in 10 races. So, what is his odds for a top three? Well, whatever it is, it's not probably not big enough to keep me off it. Well, and I think the thing with with Truex is, you know, his he just seems to kind of be up and down and up and down. Because you remember last year, he oh, yeah. went. Or, so let's go two years ago. He was terrible. Then, then last year, he went through a point where he was not very good. And then next thing you know, was the guys like the guy to beat every week. And, and then, then we crashed get to the playoffs. And Historical crash and burn. So right now, I feel like he's in a pretty good spot. Now he's not as dominant as he was in, in the no. middle of the season last year, but he's also not running as poorly as he ran during the playoffs last year either. So. He's a guy that I just think, boy, it's hard to go bet on Martin Truex Jr. because you just you don't not know what, sure. You don't know what you're going to get yet. But if you can if you can get ahead of that curve when he gets that hot streak, you ride it and you've done some stuff. So let's get to the odds to win and and the favorite, of course, right off the bat, Denny Hamlin. But how about the co-favorite for this race, the guy we just talked about, Christopher Bell. They're both plus four hundred. Martin Truex next at plus seven hundred. Kyle Larson next at eight hundred. Then you got Ty Gibbs ten. Chris Boucher, Brad Keselowski, William Byron all at twelve. Uh, Tyler Reddick fourteen. Ryan Blaney, Chase Elliott, Ross Chastain at twenty. Kyle Busch twenty five, and Joey Logano thirty to one. So two things that jump out at me on this, Brendan. Number one is the fact that Kyle Busch is twenty five to one, yep. talking about his success. And again, I'm a lot of that success was done at Joe Gibbs Racing. So. But the other one that gets me, and he's not in a, in a Toyota, but you're going to give me double-digit odds on William Byron? And I know he hasn't won at Richmond. <laughs> but he's hot. But he also hadn't won at Austin. But he's hot. He's hot, and I honestly think – so there's certain guys that you say, oh, they're really good at this racetrack. William Byron is, has now become that guy, along with a Christopher Bell and a Kyle Larson, that I expect them to be good every week. I don't care if we're at Richmond, Martinsville, Talladega, Austin, or where we're at. They're cu- you know, we've talked the last couple of years about William Byron and Alex Bowman, the, dis- the, the fading lilies, right? The dis- they, and Alex Bowman still has that tendency to wither away, and then he's back. William Byron, we said, kind of was doing, not anymore. No. William Byron now, to me, has established himself, no matter what the racetrack, it's, it's the old Jimmy Johnson days, Jeff Gordon days. He is now, no matter what track, he, he is going to be a player. Him and Kyle Larson over there, doesn't matter what there, it is. There's a bullseye on the back of his car now. Absolutely. Every week. Absolutely. And if I go to the stats, you, you talked about how bad. 
16.3 average finish last 10 races there. Two top 10s, that's it. And we're talking 11th, 24th, 21st, some bad finishes. So this is not a track that is good for him, but we talk- I do believe there's a different era here of William Byron. And we talked about how many bad finishes Christopher Bell had at Phoenix, and he went out and won the race. Won the race. And William Byron has a third place, though. He's been good there. And he knows how to get around there. I mean, it, I, I think some of it's been victim of circumstance. Just been. Uh, here's the deal. 12-1 to 1 is a heck of a heck of number For, for oh, the guy that's been dominating this season. He's got two wins in what? We've run six races yep. now? He's got two wins? So I like that, and I, I really do like the uh, uh, the Kyle Busch, 25-1. to 1. He finished third there in the playoff race, so it's not like RCR has been bad there in recent history. So I do like that number. Let's get to the second page real quick, and we got Oz finished first, Bubba Wallace 50, Alex Bowman, Chase Briscoe 60, Mike McDowell, Josh Berry, Noah Gregson, Daniel Suarez, Carson Hosfar, all at 100s. Then you got John Hunter Nemechek at 200 with Eric Jones, Ryan Priest in the field at 20 to 1. I did the math. There are nine cars in the field. Uh, these are from the South Point. Um, Come on, Chris. Hey, you Come on, that, Chris. You, you can make that as big as you want. I <laughs> we love you, Chris. But I ain't 20 the field. to 1 field. <clears throat> you can put that 1,000 to 1. I ain't betting a buck on that. Yeah. Um, nobody right now. The only one I might look at, maybe I could jump on a, on a Alex Bowman, but I still, to win the race, and he's got to make that comeback for me yet, and he hasn't made it. And I think that it, the key there is win the race because, because I, I sound like a broken record when I talk about the success that the Toyotas have had. And I see a 50 to 1 Toyota. I see a guy who's in above the cut line on the points at 200 to 1 in a Toyota. And I see his teammate also at 200 to 1. I think when you start looking at top threes, when we get into those numbers, I think you might say, wow. There's some value there because some value. I think winning is is asking a lot of those but figures. But remember, when running top three, and let, let me go back to Alex Bowman. He's won here. C- correct. Alex Bowman has a W here. So in 2021, he won in this race. So it's not like Alex hasn't done well here. But you want to talk about the whole disappearing and coming back. First, twelfth, eighth, twentieth, eighth, eighteenth. It, it's you, oh, so we should get a top <laughs> ten this time. So then. it should be a top. If you go off of that number, it should be a top ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Win, 12th, 8th. He's on the 12th, ultimate yeah. roller coaster yeah, right so, there. So, so I mean, there, there you so go. The, okay, so this is, the, this is the race he runs well. Sure. Right? Sure. Is that what we're saying? That, okay. <laughs> if, you, if you believe in that theory, there you go. Take it. It's all yours. Um, so, I, I, you know, that one, like you said, but now let's talk about that value in the top three. Because when we get to that, I think we might have something on those guys you were just saying. Top threes, of course, they always mirror. Um, these, of course, come to us from uh, DraftKings. We appreciate that. Denny Hamlin, 120 with Seabell tied right there at 120. Martin Truex Jr., 170. Ty Gibbs, Kyle Larson, both 250s. William Byron, Chris Boucher, 300s. Brad Keselowski, 350. Tyler Reddick, Ryan Blaney, and Kyle Busch, all 400. Chase Elliott, 450. Ross Chastain, 550. Joey Logano, 600. Then Bubba Wallace ten to one, and then there's Alex Bowman creeping into that front page at eleven to one. Jeff, that's here's a guy we just talked about the up and down of him. He's got to win here. If you get on the front side of Alex Bowman, here's what happens to Alex Bowman every year. He wins a couple races, right, and he does Hendrick Alex Bowman stuff, and all of a sudden he goes down to the plus five hundreds to win races and the plus two fifties for top threes, and then he fades away for six weeks and you don't talk then about. He's it. in Group D. And he's in group C and D. And then all of a sudden, he wins. When you hit the week that he's back, you get a number like an 11 to 1. Do you jump on that number? I don't. Okay. But, I, I mean, the two guys I think I like the most is, first off, you're going to give me William Byron plus 300 for a top three. Hmm. And the other one, Tyler Reddick. I do like that. 400. I do like the Tyler Reddick 400. Um, I don't dislike the Blaney at 400 either. No, I, mean, I don't. I, and I don't either. Because, But... Reddick and Blaney, they're going to run well. I mean, it's very similar to Phoenix. There's some similarities there. We know what Blaney did last year at Phoenix. He clinched the championship there. He was one of the strongest cars at Phoenix this year. And one thing we saw about Phoenix is we saw all the manufacturers run well. We just saw that the Toyotas were the best with Christopher Bell. And what about that Chris Boucher number? I mean, Chris got two top fives here in the last 10 races and a win. You know, Chris won the, won the playoff race here last year. He's our most recent winner at Richmond. Um, do, do you do you like Chris Boucher? That remember that was that stretch that Chris Boucher went on tear, winning everything. So yeah, and and I'm I'm trying to see if the if RFK has that mojo 
carried over from last year. You know, Busher's had some good runs this mm-hmm. year, but he's had some not as good runs this year. Some of that's not been his own his fault. Own fault. I'm just not sure. I guess I want to see a little bit more strength out of the RFK cars before I'm ready to go and gotcha. put my money on them. Gotcha. Let's get to the second page real quick. It kicks off with Josh Berry at 16 to 1 with Chase Briscoe there. 22 to 1 is Noah Gregson, Michael McDowell, Daniel Suarez. 25 to 1 is Ryan Priest, John Hunter, Eric Jones, Carson Hosevar, and Austin Dillon. Austin Cindric 30, LaJoy 50, Stenhouse Jr. 70, Todd Gillen 100, Zane Smith, Ty Dillon 130s. Um, Want to go back to talk about the first page? <laughs> <laughs> I think the only guy really I could see that maybe could sneak in there maybe would be John Hunter um, as a possibility, only because I do like the Toyota's or Suarez. You know, Suarez is one, one of those he's guys. one of those things where he, when he pops, he pops. Right when he's running well, and and you just you kind of just never know with with Daniel. So that's not a bad number at all on Daniel there at twenty two to one. I personally am not going to pick. <laughs> I mean, it, it, like, let's put it this way. If I lose all five picks this week, it ain't it's gonna not going to be because I went this. down picking a top three page two guy. Yeah, and, and I'm just, I'm trying to find something somewhere that gets me to say, ooh, you know, I'm trying to look at maybe an Austin Dillon who's having a terrible season, but he's got six top tens in the last 10 races. Laverne finished 11.9, you know, okay. But you're talking about having a terrible start to the oh, season. Man. I mean, goodness gracious. I, I, again, you're talking about putting money. You really want to go there. That's all I'm saying. Top three is a far difference from a top ten. But guess what? It's still you're still paying the same amount to buy the ticket and you're winning less. No, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's it's tough. I, I just there's not many on this page I like. But when we come back, Jeff. We have some stuff to talk we about. We have some fun stuff in the head to heads. So we're going to get to the head heads when we come back and we'll see you in a second because it's it's fun the head to heads this week. South Point offers all the types of entertainment you'd expect at a first class Las Vegas resort. Did you know our 400-seat showroom is one of Las Vegas' top destinations for live entertainment? Enjoy live performances by classic Vegas entertainers, bands, and today's hottest comedians, plus a rock and dance floor. You can also enjoy live entertainment at the Grand View Lounge, where you'll feel all the vibes of old Las Vegas. Enjoy the music, and if you love to laugh, don't miss The Dirty at 1230, our very own free comedy show, every Friday night at 1230 a.m. in the Grand View Lounge. The Dirty is 100% free, so arrive early. Go to southpointcasino.com or call the box office at 77136 for today's performances at the showroom and the Grandview Lounge. When you're ready for your favorite cocktail, stop in and unwind at one of our seven specialty lounges. There's a bar around every corner, because you're in Vegas, baby. South Point Casino has plenty of attractions for the whole family. Catch a movie. Our 16-screen movie theater includes two XD extreme screens for the ultimate in viewing, sound, and luxury. After the show, treat the family to a variety of treats at our old-fashioned ice cream parlor, Kate's Corner. We scoop up a variety of creamy concoctions, including smoothies, hand-dipped cones, milkshakes, malts, sodas, and sundaes. At Kate's, there's something for everyone. And if you've still got time to spare, our bowling center might be right up your alley. Voted Best of Las Vegas, it's a great place for friends and family fun. 64 lanes, a pro shop, snack bar, and arcade. And while the kids are bowling, you can play slots and sip on a drink in the Alley Cat Lounge while overlooking the lanes. For our more serious and professional bowlers, the South Point is also home to a separate tournament bowling plaza. And welcome back in. Brennan Gone, Jeff Molly. We're on segment three here, and this is where we start off with some of our favorite stuff. At least for me, this is what I've been kicking your butt on for the last two seasons. But the head-to-heads this week, Jeff, I don't know if we've ever had a week that I've seen such large numbers. And how about the names with large numbers? Well, the driver head-to-heads, it's so many weeks that we gloss over them and we spend about 30 seconds, seconds on just, them yeah. and we Blah. just move on. And and part of that's because we see so many of these plus one tens to minus, minus one ten. One ten. Yeah. So there's really not a lot of value. And this week, I mean, we've got I mean, when you guys tough, when you tough, people, tough competition when though. People like Kyle Larson and Ty Gibbs are getting plus one fifties. Wow, Martin Trucks Jr. at Mar- uh, at, at, at Richmond is getting a one thirty. But but minus one seventies. I mean, look at these numbers. I mean, right off the bat, it jumps to me. Martin Truex Jr. is a plus one thirty. We talked about nine top tens in ten races. 
He's plus 130 to Denny Hamlin's minus 150. That's the hard part. He's up against Denny Hamlin. The one that jumps out to me, Kyle Larson, like I said, Kyle Larson. This is Kyle Larson. Plus. He's a champion of this sport versus a kid that's not a champion yet. Plus 150 to minus 170. Kyle Larson to Christopher Bell's minus 170. He's also plus 125 to Martin Truex Jr.'s minus 145. I, I like that a lot. And, but the ooh. one that I want to bet, the one that I'm going to bet, I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to foreshadow my bet. Kyle Busch plus 115 to Chase Elliott's minus 135. I love that one too. In fact, I've got it circled. I'm t- starting to sitting here thinking maybe I should not circle that just so you and I don't have the same pick. Uh, but but here's the thing. I mean, what, I love what that Chase. Pick. We talked about what you know. What Chase, you Elliott, I'm not. Lately? I'm not betting Chase Elliott for nothing for right now until he proves to me that he's back in Chase Elliott form. And he hasn't. He's been running top tens. You know, he's he's decent in points. He's you know he's it's it's not like he's down. He's ninth in points. I mean, I just I can't bet him yet. You know, he's got four top tens, four top fives, last 10 races. I'm not, I'm just not on the Chase Elliott bandwagon. And you're giving me Kyle Bush, the guy who has the greatest stats in the history of mankind at this place, at a plus 115 number? Come on. I got to jump on that. Well, and I see the guy out there who I am not going to be shocked to sit up here next week and us talking about him getting his first career victory. Okay. In Ty Gibbs. Yeah. Is sitting there. He's plus 150 to Bell. Okay, that's a toughie. But he's plus 150 to Denny Hamlin and plus 125 to Martin Tricks Jr. Now, I understand that's his three teammates. Yeah. But, you know, Ty Gibbs has not been the worst Gibbs car this year. No, no. Has not been by he's far. He's been very strong this year. I like that against the Martin Truex Jr. one. I mean, the, the 125 to Martin Truex Jr. That's the one I like the best. I like that. I I like both the, the don'ts on Martin, even though he's so good here. I just, right now, I... I I, I like the Gibbs versus Martin. And, and part of that is the value. Yes. It, I mean, if it was closer, say plus 110, then maybe we're not as excited about doing it. But you get these plus 125s, that makes a big difference. That makes a big, huge difference in a head-to-head. So I think I, I, I might have two this week. Might have two. Well, you're trying to nickel and dime me while I'm trying to nickel and dime you back. Uh, once again, this is my show. Uh, I am in the – who's the <clears> only <throat> one positive in the arc? It thing. wasn't your show two years ago when you were finishing dead last. First year of the new car. <laughs> I needed a year to figure out the car. But once I figured it out, I'm like a Hendrick car, baby. I'm up front every week. I'm going to be a Gibbs car before it's all over. <laughs> Pit crew. Oh, trust me. We heard about it for a long time. It was the first year of that new car. And since then, though. Yeah, it's all back in the driver's hands they're, now. They're a Boeing 737 in the air right yeah. now is what they are. Mm-hmm. Oh, did I say that? Ooh. 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 Ooh, that hurts. Yeah, all right. Well, let's just go over that one. Let's get to it. Let's get to our let's get to our group matchups, which is the other thing we love. Well, I guess and, we know one group we won't be approaching for sponsorship of this show. <laughs> <laughs> so, Group A. Wow, uh, is this a new record? Anybody remember? Is this the highest number we've seen in a group matchup? Uh, for the long shot, it's pretty big. But you know, it's know. interesting. We got all four Gibbs cars, and like I said, it, it, this this is this a Group A is it Group A? The guys at the Westgate definitely have a sense of humor here. Christopher Bell is your favorite, a co-favorite with Denny Hamlin at both two hundred five. Martin Truex Jr. is a plus three twenty, which is normally a massive number in a group. And then you go to plus four fifteen for Ty Gibbs. The problem is he's up against Christopher Bell, Denny Hamlin. Uh, but. Is plus four fifteen enough of a number to entice me in a four man horse race? Hmm. And what what are his odds to win the race, Brendan? Uh, Ty Christian? Gibbs is ten to one to win the race, or so I can get a four fifteen on a four man horse race. But a four fifteen in a very good likelihood that the winner is going to come out of that group. Uh, I'm thinking if you want to bet Ty Gibbs in this situation, bet, bet him, him to win. win the race. If because it's if, ten to one, I, and and I think that's some of the stuff that Alex last week was probably pointing out is where to find that value. You're 415 for a four man horse race, but we do think the probability of one of the winners coming out of this group is high anyway, and he's 10 to 1 to win the race. So I, I'd say go bet him 10 to 1 to win the race, I, as I, opposed to taking a 415 in this group. A. I can't disagree because the Chevrolets did not look good at, at, uh, at Phoenix, did not look as good as, not as the good. Toyotas. So I, I do agree. If you're going to take it, take that. Hard to pick this group for me. Um, that's three of the four, you know. Maybe I'm a little low on Truex, but I'm still high on Truex. I mean, I'm not low on Truex, just I, I kind of like that. Let's get to Group B, and Group B has William Byron, your favorite, at 235. Then the three guys, Chris Boucher, Brad Keselowski, Tyler Reddick, all at 280. I'm kind of bummed that Chris is all the way up to Group B here because um, I won me with some Chris Boucher money last week. I like that Tyler Reddick as a dog, though. Me, too. 
big time. I, I like, I like the fact Reddick. that he is the only Toyota in this group, and he's a and he is a competitive Toyota in this group. Now, the William God, Byron Chris, being in, William Byron being in Group B is is very is the one thing that makes me go, oh, I wish William Byron wasn't in this group. But you're going to give me plus two eighty on Tyler Reddick in Group B when he's the only Toyota there. I love Tyler Reddick. Yeah, but in, you know, in the in the fall during the playoff race, Brad Keselowski six, Chris Boucher wins. Them four, you know, okay. RFK was good there. But I need to see RFK showing that to start this season. I, I don't think that. Now, they've been good, but they haven't been a winning car yet. They haven't no, but, really competed for a win yet. I agree. I, I just, I oh, man, I do like that Tyler Reddick, but, and, but having both. Uh, Chris Boucher cashes tickets, man, and betting against Chris Boucher just seems so. He cashed one for you last week, I believe. He's ca- we we talked to Chris. There's nobody that's cashed more tickets in, in the history of our show than than Chris Boucher. I mean, he is and the pressure we put on him every oh, do week. Oh, we by do too. And we tell just so everybody knows, we tell Chris we have told him that yes. that you know that, that he he absolutely <laughs> but up in group B, I mean, come on, Westgate, put him back down in D. I mean, maybe not F, but Give me a D for Boucher. Well, I bet him every week. Oh, hell yeah. Him every week. That's why they're, that, hey, they're not stupid. But I, do, I do like Reddick here. I do I, I, I do I, still like Reddick, though. It, it's, I'm torn. I like Reddick. I'm torn. I don't know if I'm going to bet it, but I like it. Group C, though, has one that I really do like, Jeff. And Group C starts with Chase Elliott at 250, Ross Chastain, 265, Ryan Blaney, 265. And the dog in this group, yes, the dog at plus 290, Kyle Busch. Well, I'm hinting that the way you're talking about it, you love the dog in this group. I actually like Ryan Blaney in this group. Um, I, again, I'm c- comparing this track a bit. Now, the one that makes me most nervous here is Ross Chastain. Has what? It, we all, remember we always talk about Ross's stats. You got to do, you know, kind of two eras of Ross. But still, he has a third place finish in this race, the spring race last year. Other than that. Nothing to write home about at Richmond, even in the current era of when he's got some Ganassis and better cars in there. So I'm, that and the Chase Elliott thing—I know everybody's high on Chase Elliott. You know, four top fives, nine races, la la la. I still don't see it. I, you know, Ryan Blaney, Ryan Blaney stats, Jeff, at this place, three top tens, last ten races, average finish fifteen point eight. So you don't like Blaney either. I don't like Blaney at all. See, I just I, well, I I'm trying to kind of compare this a, a little bit to Phoenix now. And I think that's why I like Blaney here. I think some of what he's done at Phoenix, he can translate that over here to Richmond. I don't disagree with that a little bit, but man, I that two ninety at Kyle Busch, I'm it's going to be hard for me to Group C. We might be going head to head in that one. It sounds. I like. like it. I like it. All right, let's get to Group D. And Group D, we kick off with Daniel Suarez and Michael McDowell, your co-favorites, or like I like to call him, Michael McDougal, my co-favorites. Uh, Josh Berry two seventy, Noah Gregson two seventy. Tough one here to handicap. <clears throat> to me, Noah Gregson has probably been running the best of these guys, not finishing the best, running the best. Josh Berry has certainly been the, the weaker of the four in this group. And Daniel, of course, has a W this year. But, well, you know, where, where, who, what, when, where, why type thing. This, to me, is the group that I can't make a bet on. It's a throw up the X, huh? This, this is my X. This week, yeah. Group D is my X group. I can't. I can't find who I'm going to say I like to, to say, oh, here's a stat that sticks out that says McDowell, Josh. No, I can't the, find a the stat. The only guy that would win this group that would surprise me would be Josh Berry right now. The other three winning this group would not surprise me at all. And and I think that's the reason why we're seeing it so close. We yeah. got a pair of 265s yeah. and a pair of 270s because it is that close. Yep. So I'm with you. I, I certainly wouldn't bet this group this week. I, um, so if you really just feel like, hey, I'm somebody that's got to go bet every group, I'm sorry, I can't give you one. I here. can't give you one in this one. Uh, but Group E, we have this is some fun names here. It's going to be hard to handicap, but there's some fun names here. Carson Hosevar already worked his way out of Group F. He's in Group E, plus 260. John Hunter Nemechek, Eric Jones, and Ryan Priest all at 270. Surprises me Ryan Priest is, you know, 270 with Stuart Haas Racing, but he really hasn't done anything for us, right? I mean, Ryan just hasn't kind of hasn't showed up, honestly. I like. I know you like Nemechek. I know you're going to go right to Nemechek. I like Hosevar how he's been running. I just I like either of the legacy cars. I agree. Hosevar has been running well. Um, I, I do. I think he's been averaging a 15th to 20th place finish every week, and I think 15th to 20th wins this group. Well, and, I, and it very well could. I just I like the two legacy cars compared to Hosevar and Priest right here. So the problem is, 
I don't know that I feel that strongly about Nemechek over Eric Jones. I know Eric Jones is a guy who, uh, you know, we've seen Eric Jones have flashes of, well, of being really have, running really but well. Never at Richmond. Not at Richmond. That's never correct. at Richmond. I'm looking at his stats at Richmond. Never at Richmond. Um, I, if I've got to pick somebody here, I'm going to pick John Hunter. Um, I was really tempted to make that one of my picks this week, but the the more I've thought about it, the more I've looked at it, I'm kind of like, you know, I'm probably going to stay away from this group too. Right. Ryan Priest average finish of 21 with one top five in seven races. So Ryan Priest has the best record, so to speak. You know, he's he's got that one flash. And it was it was the playoff race, fifth place last year. Well, and maybe I'm putting a lot of my efforts on talking about the improvement that Toyota's made to the True. short track program. And Eric I think Jones, though, never been good here. I mean, it doesn't matter if he was at Gibbs, never been good here. Yeah, and John Hunter has run well there in the other series before. So we'll like I'm trying to trans- find Eric and oh Eric. Average finish twenty three point seven. Ten races, zero top tens. Like I said, you gotta take somebody, I'm taking John Hunter. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not, but we're allowed to disagree. All right, guys, we got our final segment where we give you Group F, our props, and our picks, and uh, I get to tell you once again who's in the lead. South Point is also proud to provide a variety of relaxing amenities for the guests who want to be pampered. Soak up the sun and let your stress melt away in our lagoon-style paradise swimming pool. A relaxing getaway where you can bask in the desert sun and enjoy seasonal food and bar service poolside. And if you really want to escape, come to Spa Costa del Sur. From couple suites to a co-ed wet area, our spa caters to business and leisure travelers who want to unwind and elevate their senses. A visit to one of our spa's steam, sauna, or whirlpool treatment rooms will leave any guest feeling like they can take on the world. gaming amenities include over 60 table games and over 2,600 of the most popular slot and video poker machines. We have penny slots, including the popular Buffalo games and real machines like Wheel of Fortune, Triple Sevens, and Mega Bucks. If you prefer video poker, try Deuces Wild, Double Double Bonus, or a variety of multi-denomination games. Or try your hand at one of the most popular casino table games in the world. Blackjack. Don't let the game intimidate you. Blackjack, also known as 21, is both easy and fun. And our dealers are always happy to assist. And the best part? Blackjack always pays three to two. Next, check out the roulette tables. Roulette is one of the easiest casino games to learn. And so much fun to play. It's a favorite of both beginners and seasoned players. In addition to blackjack and roulette, our casino pit features over 60 popular table games like Baccarat, Pie Gal Poker, Three Card Poker, Ultimate Texas Hold'em, and Mississippi Stud. So get out of your room and come join in the fun. Welcome back. The two Utes, the two of yous, as Ann says. Ann just got transported to Brooklyn or something, right. or the Bronx. The two Utes. Uh, Jeff Ute. Motley Brennan gone back in the Ute. What? What's is a Ute? Ute? Uh, back Excuse in the Southway studio. Utes. <laughs> I love that. That was the movie. best movie ever. Come on, favorite movie. Love, my cousin Vinny. My cousin Vinny is the, and we have my cousin. We Vinny. have my cousin right Vinny. There. He was on the show last That's week. That's right. <laughs> Hanging out at the South Point studio, right in front of, of course, the South Point Sports Book and Mr. Motley. We are in our last segment where we are just getting ready to wrap up Group F, and Group F is normally one that we we like to. Group F has kind of always been one of our favorites, right? I mean, it's it's an old favorite on the show. We used to call it the Ron Flatter Group for in, uh, an ode to our former co-host here on the Gone Racing Show. Mr. Horse Racing. Ron That's right, Flatter. Mr. Horse Racing. Uh, we kick off Group F, Austin Cedric at 260, Todd Gilliland, Corey LaJoy, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., all at 270. Um, the only thing I can say is Austin Cedric is actually running better. Todd Gilliland is running better. Todd Gilliland has been running phenomenally, not, not finishing, finishing well. phenomenally. Corey and, LaJoy is another one. And who's Corey been LaJoy running runs much phenom- better, not finishing and well. And Corey normally knows how to finish. But, yeah. you know, I, I just, it's, this I mean, is. A- if I had to pick somebody here, I'd say Stenhouse is probably the guy that, I, but, but then. I, I, Where is Stenhouse on here? Uh, let's see. Uh, average finish 20.4. Last 10 races. Corey LaJoy average finish 27. 
Well, I, I, well, I think that there's one conclusion that we're reaching here, Brendan, and that is Group F is not, not our group this week. Group F this week. <laughs> group F not our group this week. Group F just not not going to quite cut it for us. So, sorry, Group F. That's we're, we're out on you. Uh, our last pick, of course, is our prop bet, and this week we have uh, the once again though Toyota uh, Chevrolet not the favorite in our prop bet this week. Um, Toyota still the favorite at plus one twenty. Chevy is plus one forty. And then Ford at plus 350. Is that enough enticement to jump on the Ford bad wagon? No. Who would you pick if you could pick a Ford? Because we didn't talk about Joy. You know who we didn't talk about would... once today? Joy Logano. Well, we talked about him not being in the top 16 in points. That's about it. And that's about it. Honestly, if I were going to pick a Ford, it would probably be Ryan Blaney. But I don't know that I see Ryan Blaney winning. And, and what's funny is we went through this whole show, never gave any love to Joey, who, who has... In the last 10 races, remember that's the stats I, I always have, the 10 races, he's got five top fives, seven top tens, average finish 7.2. It's just, I, I guess I need to see something from that team right now. I mean, it's, they're, a little, they're a little lackluster I know it's the in there. I mean, we know I'm, it's in there. I'm looking back to Phoenix because we think this is a little like Phoenix, and Logano not, had an accident, not running good at Phoenix, um, hasn't been great. I mean, he's you know runs well, just not great right now, so... I think that 350 on Ford is definitely deserved. I and I honestly think that Chevy should be about a plus 180 versus um, this because, Toyota. Yeah. All right, well, look, who are the four favorites to win the race? The four Gibbs cars. Four Gibbs cars, and they're all Toyotas. Yeah. So to me, I don't think that the odds are really actually that fair on Chevrolet. If you want to know the truth, I think if you're going to bet anybody here, go with the favorite, the plus 120, and and try to take that. I, but it's it's such a small return. The manufacturer prop is a tough one this week. It is a hard one this week. Um, so I'm I'm kind of on the same boat with you. I just I, I it's tough. And it's, let's face it, you don't want to talk about manufacturer props because you can't wait. <clears throat> well, actually, we got. I can do the championship odds. I can, champion, I can, I can slow roll it. Standing, I can you, slow roll it one second. I mean, I can I can at least wait start. one more second to pat me on the back again. I mean, I, my arms kind of hurts from you know. Brendan will miss the next two weeks for rotator cuff surgery <laughs> that he has received uh, from patting himself on the back. I mean, you know, I came from the I came I, in the in the trunk two weeks ago to the front. I mean, just saying. I mean, the guy has no voice in Mexico a week ago, and he's but his all he did, were, all he did when he could. Strong. Then think about this: Brendan not being able to talk. It's and then one. and then you so what did you do? You spent your time researching and making picks for the race last weekend in Austin, and you kicked all of our butts. Uh, you know, should have been five for five. But uh, right now the odds haven't changed a lot. We just said William Byron went from seven hundred to six hundred, so it hasn't moved a whole lot there. Still a lot of value on this page to me, though. I believe Chris Boucher. Yeah, I'm I'm a believer in you know believe in Boucher, and at twenty five to one, I think that's huge. Ty Gibbs, who you've been we talked a ton about this show. Ty Gibbs twenty to one. Tyler Reddick fourteen to one. Those are names to me that just scream value, value, value on the championship odds. Jump on them now. I agree. But the one thing that they've got to start doing, though, is they've got to start compiling some playoff points. Because if they don't start compiling some playoff points, even when they make the playoffs, as we found out with Harvick a couple years ago. Oh. It, you know, And you, as we found out with, with, with Martin Truex last year, being able to survive the abysmal run that he had. Because he had all yes. those playoff points going in. So at some point, Ty Gibbs is as good and as consistent as he's been. He's got to get some. He's got to start getting some playoff. Points. Okay, let's stop talking about that. Let's talk about last week's results. Um, last week as a uh, mediocre week for Mister Motley, a a situation normal week for Christopher uh, Bell won for everybody. C Bell did win, um, and and the pit crew came with a, 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 with a, a minus point two five with, a with C Bell. So I mean, you know, can't can't knock that one. Um, they they at least they're only they're a, a, a paltry minus two point five on the season. Mr. Motley, you got yourself a, a win with a lar- uh, uh with Seabell. Yeah, with Seabell. That's right. Seabell won for yeah, everybody. Yeah, Seabell won for All everybody. Three of us got a winner. So you're you're minus six point. You're bringing up the trunk of the field, but Brendan gone. Your winner in the clubhouse on this. I had quite a few good ones. Uh, I almost had Almondinger too. Almondinger was only a couple spots behind Ty Gibbs, mind you. I just I, I was right there with Almondinger. I could have won that one. Uh, Larson beat SVG. Uh, Kyle Busch in the top three. That was he was running good enough, but him and Seabell kind of got into each other. But I got my Seabell top three, and uh, I got my uh, my Chris Boucher gave me the W for the. Uh, I have, I I can't recall being more disinterested in a segment of the show than I am right now. I'm. That's my show today. I'm hosting, so I get to talk about it a lot. <laughs> See, you should have hosted this week. Then you could have just skipped by this one and gone right to the picks. But no. somehow, I don't think you would have allowed that. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's our show. We share. Congratulations. <laughs> I love you like a brother. You know it. For the season, I am now back on top, plus 7.3 units. Uh, and we go worst to first here, and that would be the pick. Oh. Uh, no. Okay. Mr. Motley gets to kick off the uh, betting picks this week. I get it. Okay. I'm actually going to go into a top three. Going to give me William Byron at a plus 300 for a top three as, run as he's, well as he's running. I'm going to take William Byron there at a plus 300. I'm going two driver head-to-heads. Um, Kyle Busch over Chase Elliott, plus 115. And Ty Gibbs, he, he is not going to be the worst car in the Gibbs camp this week. I got it. Ty Gibbs plus 125 over Martin Truex Jr. And then I'm going to go into the groups. Uh, Tyler Reddick being the long shot at plus 280 in Group B. And maybe the one I feel the least confident about, I'm going to go Ryan Blaney at plus 265 in Group C. See, that's just between me and Jeff. I feel confident about all my picks. And those of you who are listening on SiriusXM and see that silence, it's because I have no response for it. And Brennan is just sitting over here laughing silently. I'm having fun right now, Mr. Motley. I think you need to read the pit crew picks. Okay, I'm going to read the pit crew picks. Pit crew is, uh, they do not believe in the in the uh, Martin Truex Jr. having a bad day. So they are going with Martin Truex Jr. versus Christopher Bell, plus 130 in the head-to-heads. They're all they're going on a bell don't line. What they're, did I say? Don't bet the bell don't line. I'm, I am on, I'm not on that saying, bandwagon. I'm just saying. Larson versus Bell at plus one fifty. Then they're giving Bush in the top three at plus four hundred. I do like that one. They got Chevy at plus one forty and Suarez, my my muchachito, at plus two sixty five in Group D. Good luck. Interesting picks on that. Good luck. Very very interesting. Who am I to who am I to say anything? I'm in last place. So. Yeah, I mean they, now. Uh, so me, I'm taking a different approach this week. Um, no, I'm not. I'm going the same way I've been going. I got one top three, and I am on the Jeff Motley bandwagon here. Ty Gibbs top three. I really, really do believe the kid is showing some some strength right now. He's showing poise. He's running really well. And for a top three, he's plus two fifty. I like it. When we do our social media clip, can that be the social media clip when Brendan says he's on the Jeff Motley bandwagon? Jeff Motley bandwagon. I think that should be our social media clip this week. <laughs> and, and listen, you, you, our you promo picked clip. Him. As I had the worst pick ever last year with Martin Truex being the disappointment, I was wrong until the playoffs. You are so far 100% right yeah. with. Still got a long way to go, but yes, off we to do. a good start. Uh, then I'm going two head to heads. Uh, I, I just. Larson at plus 150 was sitting there screaming about Seabell, but I like Seabell too much. So I'm going Larson versus Truex Jr. at plus 125. I, I'm, I, I think that Martin is just, even though Phoenix didn't work out quite that well, I, I don't see Hendrick having two bad races in a row like that. So I got Larson over Truex, and I've also with you, Kyle Busch over Chase Elliott. I, I just, Kyle's running way too, so much better than Chase, even though it, it, we're talking about the RCR being down. So there's my two head-to-heads. Then I got two groups kicking off first, Kyle Busch in Group C. I'm on the Kyle Busch bandwagon at plus 290 versus the guys right there. I got him in a head-to-head, and I got him in a group versus Chase. A lot, so, of, a lot of confidence on Got Kyle. a lot of confidence in K.Y. Bush. I'm going to call him after this and tell him, don't let me down, or he's paying for Michaels next time. And I am going to start putting my money on where my mouth is with this Carson Hosevar, Carson Hosevar kid. I just I like what I see. I mean, I, Spire Motorsports, not the biggest team in the world. But you know what? This kid is is showing some some uh, some next level skills here as a rookie. I'm going Carson Hosevar Group e. Carson Carson Hosevar Group E. No, I like and I like Hosevar, and I think yeah, you're right. He, look, he proved proved himself the quality racer he is in the lower series. Yeah, I, I just he's done well, and and I wasn't expecting a lot out of that Spire Motorsports car, but you know what? They're, they're looking they're top 15, 15s and 20s. That wins this group. Well, and look, there's a lot of guys out there with a lot better equipment than him that he's been that he's been at, kicking from, their butt every week from, from week to week. Yep. So no, I, I I like the host of our thing. I I didn't have the guts to pick it, but when you're leading, you can. I got I, I like it. I just the kid. I, I hope we can maybe we can start calling him our next Chris Boucher, where you know he stays in that, those lower groups and gets those picks for us. Well, Molly, we have we have. Uh, Professionally unprofessional, our way through another show, amazingly enough. Another show. Now we get to go through Richmond, your least favorite racetrack on the I might have to be sick next week. And we should say, it is your least favorite racetrack to race on. 
Yes. You, no. You, you didn't hate going there. Or no, anything. no. You just didn't I, like listen, racing it. Rick. And and they got it, it is the fan friendly track. I mean, they they've got you know great racing. It's three four wide. You think I would like it because it's similar to Irwindale, which I dominated Irwindale on the West Coast, but I just never could get around that joint. Um, so it, it uh, when Dennis Bickmeyer was in charge, I used to have a lot of fun messing and with him. One thing our better should watch out for. We're going to be in Iowa this year. Very similar very, racetracks. Supposed, supposedly very similar to, to Richmond. R- so see, Rusty built them. Richmond may help you get an idea of what's going to, how things are going to go at Iowa. I'm nope. just saying. I just, all right. Well, th- that's our show for today. Thank you guys very much. Hopefully uh, you can go to the betting counter like I have every week right now and make cash some tickets or listen to Motley. I'm just saying. you, know, you got two choices. Thank you, guys. We'll be with you next week. Break down what we did at Richmond and lead into uh, Martinsville. Thank you.